Hey everyone, today we are giving my kitchen hutch a makeover. I really hope this video can help you. I am going to be sharing some tips and tricks I learned along the way. So hopefully it'll help your project go more smoothly. So let's get started. First thing I'm gonna be doing is emptying out all the drawers and shelves and the dogs definitely did not make this process very easy. It was winter and really windy during this project so we actually decided to just do it right in our dining room. We put down a tarp, moved the kitchen table, and did hit my head on the chandelier. You can see it's still rocking. Luckily the hutch is just in two pieces, it literally just sits on top. So we separated it and I'm just giving it a little wipe down with an old sock. Here I'm starting out with a 120 grit sandpaper sponge and I'm going to go ahead and sand this down and then wipe all the dust particles off with another rag or sock. definitely recommend putting all your hardware, your screws, your brackets, everything into a Ziploc bag because it's surprising how many there actually are until they're in a pile on the floor. Take a slightly damp cloth and you're going to want to wipe down all the wood dust. Why most people choose chalk paint is to skip this entire step. You don't have to sand. I personally still wanted to sand just because I wanted a beautifully smooth surface. So I went ahead and took the extra step and did sand, but you don't have to. I chose not to paint the insides white. I kind of wanted to leave the normal wood finish on the inside just because I felt like I didn't want to completely transform everything. I wanted it to have that little bit of antique look and I could kind of be reminded of what it looked like beforehand. So I am keeping the insides the natural brown. So we ended up making a quick stop to the hardware store to get a couple things. We needed another 120 grit sandpaper sponge. We needed to get some wood glue and also some wood filler. This Gorilla brand worked really well. I bought the wood filler in white and I'm really glad I did because after I finished painting, there were actually some spots I missed. So luckily it matched the paint. You will also need a putty knife. This piece had a lot of little holes in it, which I feel like looked fine with the natural wood color, but once it's white, it just did not, I just knew it wouldn't go, so I had to fill it in. And I was right, because when it was white, I actually saw that I had missed some. So definitely buy it in the same color you are painting. time it says on the bottle for how long you should let it dry and then I went ahead and sanded it down and here I'm just wiping it clean and you can see all the holes are filled in nicely and it's all nice and smooth since it's been sanded down yeah. here it was finally time to start putting the chalk paint on and it's really nice because you really don't have to be very precise with it on the first coat, just kind of slap it on. I tried to go in the same direction of the wood, but when it started looking really good was coat number two. If 
you can get an extra set of hands to help you, I would definitely take the help because this project was 100% not easy. It was really, really difficult and much bigger than I even expected. So definitely take the help if you can find it. So here is the bottom piece after coat number one. You can see it definitely needs another coat. Luckily this paint dries very quickly, so here goes coat number two. Now we've moved on to the top piece of the hutch, and I will tell you this piece was far worse than the bottom piece. All these little columns and the backboard of it, we were getting pretty tired by this point. On this coat we decided to go ahead and use the roller on the top piece, which seemed to work really well. We went ahead and continued using the roller on the sides as well as some of the front parts. So here you can really see the little holes in white, it just, I had to fill them in. using a mini paintbrush to get in all the little corners. Here I'm going to use some spray paint by Krylon in metallic silver to spray paint over these brassy hardware pieces. Everything is looking so far. Here's the top piece of the hutch. I am just loving how it's looking so far. And here's the bottom piece. So as you can see, the surface is just not very smooth. It definitely is due for another sanding. So this is where I'm gonna use the 220 grit sandpaper sponge. Now it's time for me to flip over the hardware and spray paint the other side. These are the hardware pieces I chose for the doorknobs, um, drawer and doorknobs I should say. I just love these flowers, I love the crystal rose, I love the white flower. The white flower actually looks like something I used to draw as a child, so it just was perfect for, for a piece that belongs to me now. So this is where the project took a huge turn for the worse. As you can see, one looks really shiny and glossy and the other's matte. We got some very bad advice from people on YouTube and actually people at Home Depot that we should use polyurethane on the chalk paint project. It has a yellow tinge to it and I will say that once this dried, you can even see as I'm painting it on now, it made my project yellow and caused so much extra work and so much extra money because I had to go and buy more paint to paint over everything that we had put over from the polyurethane. So please do not, no matter who tells you, it is not okay to put polyurethane on top of chalk paint on your project. Don't do it. I will show you after all this, it's literally making me cringe watching us do this all over again, knowing how much extra work it caused and how much extra money we had to buy, not only on paint, but on the extra supplies like paint brushes and trays and everything. So I will show you what is a good idea to seal in your paint on your project. And not only all that, it smells terrible. This was after two coats of painting on top of the polyurethane. You can see even on the columns how yellow tinged this is. So as much as we didn't want to, it was time for another coat of paint on top of the polyurethane. 
which added another couple of nights to the project. But now here we are again, back to where we started, time to seal again. So this is what you should be using to seal your chalk paint project. This applied really easily and you can see it's white, it's not yellow and did not stain or damage the finish in any way. The instructions say to wipe it down, so I just painted a layer and then wiped it off with a clean cloth. So just as a reminder, here is what the hutch looked like before. And then here is after with the polyurethane. And then here is the after, the final after. I am just so happy with how it turned out. I am so glad we actually went back and just did the extra work and made it look like this, how it was intended to. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully I can help your project go more smoothly. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye!